From filmmaker David Fincher comes the heavily debated and controversial third entry in the Alien franchise, a film that was, at the time, very much presented to be the finale of the Alien story, and in a lot of ways, it still is. Starring franchise hero Sigourney Weaver once again, returning to her infamous role as Ellen Ripley, plus a frenzied xenomorph variant that, depending on which cut of the film you watch, is either born from a dog or born from an ox. Let's take a look at Alien 3. <laughs> If you've seen my previous reviews on both Alien and Aliens, then you already know how much Alien 3 was a part of the zeitgeist of early 90s pop culture. And if you haven't seen those previous reviews, well, I'm about to tell you right now. When I was growing up in the early 90s, I was probably five or six at the time, we had access to a sweltering amount of Alien content at the time. Stuff like action figures, comic books, video games, you name it. Most of which bore the Alien's brand, rather than the Alien or Alien 3 logos, but nonetheless, heavy focus remained on the franchise at large, especially with the imminent release of Alien 3. Back in those days, Video rental centers and comic book shops were still plentiful, especially in my town. This was the 90s after all, so I not only continued to embrace my existing love for all things aliens, especially those epic action figures, and shout out to my grandma who, on weekends here and there, would absolutely indulge my fascination with the brand by taking me to these comic book shops and toy stores and whatnot. And this is really when I was first exposed to the notion that there'd even be an Aliens Part 3. The comic book shops started having little posters on their walls, I started seeing printed ads for the film in the pages of a lot of the Alien comic books, and I just remember being mind blown by that initial logo for the film. I mean, this thing absolutely flipped my lunch tray. And speaking of video rental centers, in particular the infamous Videoland, which is my most cherished video rental center of all time, my mom's boyfriend at the time, Zach, had a lot of friends who worked at this store in those days, and somehow or another, they managed to get their hands on a pre-release promotional making of style VHS about Alien 3. And I vividly remember seeing a ton of footage and interviews and all kinds of stuff that completely flipped my lunch tray at the time. I don't remember how long it was before the actual movie came out that we got the chance to see this VHS or who actually ordered the thing or not. I'm not sure if it was the owner of Videoland herself who got it, or if it was one of her employees using her catalog as a means to do so themselves, or what it was. All I know is that they got it, and it was epic in all of its gloriously video cassette quality. I can't say for sure, but I have a feeling that the VHS tape I'm talking about is most likely the making of Alien 3 VHS, which came with a weird 3-pack released before the theatrical run of Alien 3, called the Alien 3-pack or something, which featured the first two films as well as this weird making of tape. I'm almost positive this was it. But anyways, I'm rambling, but my point about the VHS is this, at that point, Having seen the posters and the comic book ads and all that jazz, including this VHS tape, my anticipation of Alien 3 was at an all-time high, even at 5 or 6 years old. But unlike Freddy's Dead a year prior, or Jason Goes to Hell a year later, my mom did not take me to see Alien 3 in theaters, damn it! I'm not sure exactly why we didn't see the film in theaters, since both my mom and I, and Zach, were all big fans of the first two films. Unless we did see the film in theaters and I've simply forgotten, which I call nonsense on since I remember everything else from back then that I saw at the theater, but what else happened in May of 92 that would have stopped us from going? Oh yeah, my little brother was born in May. I guess that makes sense. So with that said, it wasn't until December later that year, or perhaps even sometime in 1993, that I finally had the chance to give it a watch on VHS. 
and by God was it glorious. Even back then, I just loved everything about it. Well, maybe not everything about it. Even back then, I could tell that there were a few things that were just off about the movie. But as kids tend to do, I overlooked much of those flaws and enjoyed the film for what it was. And unlike the seeming opinion of every adult around me, we, meaning myself and my fellow kids at the time, had a blast with Alien 3. Talking about it on the playground during recess, playing the absolutely awesome SNES game, and to a lesser extent, the Genesis version as well, and so on and so forth. Alien 3 rocked the house as far as we were concerned, and as far as those aforementioned flaws go, well, I'll come back to those in a bit. Alien 3 continues the story of Ellen Ripley, played again by Sigourney Weaver, following the events of Aliens. When an electrical fire erupts on the Sulaco, an escape pod is launched into space, containing our hibernating survivors, Ripley, Newt, and Hicks, and of course, the resident android himself, Bishop. Soon thereafter, the escape pod crash lands on the planet Fiorina 161, a bleak wasteland inhabited by the all-male inmates of the planet's maximum security prison. However, in a disastrous turn of events, Ripley is the sole survivor, as Newt and Hicks, unfortunately, meet terrible ends during the crash. When a facehugger emerges from the wreckage, laid in secret by the Queen Alien before her reappearance at the end of the last film, it soon finds a new host in the form of a dog, or the, again, depending on which cut you watch, the ox, and a variant of Xenomorph unlike anything we've ever seen in an alien film, is born. In the midst of dealing with the death of both Hicks and Newt, Ripley must also now face skepticism regarding the new Xenomorph, as incidents with the alien begin to take place. As the terrifying new creature hunts down the men one by one, Ripley must lead them into a battle against the terrifying creature, and outsmart it before it destroys them all. And they must do this without weapons or modern technology of any kind. And... At first, unbeknownst to Ripley, it very quickly becomes clear that she's carrying more than the weight of Newton Hicks's death. Now, remember those flaws I mentioned before the synopsis? Let's address those flaws now. The few flaws I have with the film, that is. Although they are some pretty big ones. Three big, giant, glaring flaws. They killed Hicks! They killed Newt! They decommissioned Bishop! Those are Alien 3's big three flaws. You can keep your problems with the story and your problems with Ripley's hair. You can keep your issues with the pacing and the questionable CGI. You can keep every problem and issue you people have with Alien 3. To me, I think a lot of those quote-unquote issues are what make the film truly different and special and weird. They're not detriments, they're attributes. What are detriments, though, are the off-screen deaths of Hicks and Newt. And the fact that we only have one small scene with a puppet version of Bishop, these are the only flaws I truly take issue with. And boy, are they some gargantuan mistakes. Imagine how good this film would have been if Hicks and Newt had been along for the ride of this film, trapping the alien, interacting with the goofy prisoners. That would have been some truly interesting stuff, if you ask me. But alas, the powers that be decided we needed Ripley on her own again, no matter the cost, no matter how much you piss off diehard fans of the previous film. Killing Hicks is one thing, decommissioning Bishop is one thing, but Newt? Killing Newt, the little survivor who had been through so much in our previous venture, finally safe again and with basically a brand new mom and protector in Ripley, killed off screen and in truly horrible fashion. I mean, look at the expression on her face. This is absolutely horrible stuff. Not only did the filmmakers feel the need to take the saga's innocence away with the demise of Newt, but they did it in truly horrific fashion, in a way that ensured the character we met in Aliens, the frightened adopted daughter of Ripley herself, died screaming, fighting for her life, and drowning to death unforgivable as far as I'm concerned. But what else could we do to really put the icing on the cake as far as this horrible situation is concerned? How about a long, drawn-out autopsy scene with really loud sound effects so we can really hear the little girl's ribcage being cracked open? Wouldn't that be cool? I 
mean, Jesus Christ. Unacceptable. Newt deserved better than this, and the filmmakers absolutely failed this character. Other than that, though, Alien 3 absolutely charms you with its gritty yet gripping atmosphere. Its bleak and desolate corridors are spooky and foreboding. Its cast is comprised of some truly weird and sometimes even funny characters, with pretty damn great acting chops to boot. I mean, in addition to Sigourney Weaver, we have Charles S. Dutton, Brian Glover, Charles Dance, and Ralph Brown in this film. I had to beat them to death with their own shoes. The primary cast is absolutely fantastic here. It's always nice to see Lance Henriksen too, even if he is just a puppet. Ripley, as always, is awesome and awesomely badass at the same time. Even though she's completely heartbroken and in despair all throughout the runtime, she still does what she can to fight through it in order to see the destruction of the film's titular xenomorph once and for all. And speaking of the xenomorph, H.R. Giger himself, at least at first, did return to the series to sketch some preliminary designs for the new creature. But like the rest of the behind-the-scenes nonsense we're all familiar with by this point, and if you're not, do yourself a favor and check out the incredibly crazy production behind Alien 3, it didn't fully work out in the end. And while the end result is still pretty cool and memorable, the weird CGI scenes of the Xenomorph look absolutely horrific and not in a good way. But the actual real-life stuff with the alien does look pretty cool. Stan Winston didn't return for this one, so the fabrication and implementation of the Xenomorph in Alien 3 went to Tom Woodruff Jr. and Alec Gillis this time around. So good on them. The real-life alien suit and maquette, or whatever the hell was going on with the non-CGI stuff, looks fantastic. The pacing of Alien 3 is great. Not as fast as Aliens, but not as slow as Alien. Sort of a good mix of both. The aforementioned acting chops of our great cast is excellent, especially Sigourney Weaver, who kills it as always. The original score by Elliot Goldenthal is absolutely killer, and in my opinion, is severely underrated. The cinematography and sound design are great, the overall production design is absolutely on point, and all in all, I truly believe the cast and crew of Alien 3 was firing in all cylinders here. Were they somewhat bogged down by a rocky production and some weird story choices? Absolutely. But everybody involved here elevates the final product to something totally beyond what it would have been if the wrong people had been involved. But luckily, these were all the right people. There's some pretty gut-wrenching stuff here, too. In spurts, of course, but there are some damn emotional powerhouse scenes on display here and there, especially the funeral of Newton Hicks. I mean, it's almost hard to watch. And David Fincher. I know you get a lot of flack for Alien 3, and you give yourself a lot of flack for Alien 3, but goddammit, Alien 3 kicks all kinds of ass, and we absolutely love it. And audiences are really starting to come around to the film. I know it's taken a few decades, but Alien 3 is definitely going cult status, which is awesome no matter how you slice it. And on that note, the film really does feel like the true ending of the Alien saga. Obviously we know now that it goes on and on from here, and continues on in the next film, but for Ripley, at least the real and original Ripley, not a clone of Ripley, Alien 3 really is the end of the line. And there's something so haunting and melancholy, yet beautiful about the way this film concludes. It's poetic, sad, it's powerful, and gripping right until the bitter end. I've been a fan of this movie since I first saw it way back in the early 90s, and I continue to be a staunch supporter of it to this very day. It does not deserve the flack it gets, and it's surely an underrated gem buried by years of negativity. And if you haven't seen it in a few years, or maybe not even since it first came out, I implore you to watch it again and give it another shot. And check out the assembly cut if you get the chance as well. I really do love both versions. Is it as good as Alien or Aliens? Well, for me, no. Alien and Aliens are both quote-unquote better movies and better made movies at that. But if I'm being honest, while Aliens has always been and always will be my favorite Alien film, Alien 3, when compared to the first film, is much more fun than the 1979 original. Even though the original is a better movie, Alien 3 is simply more fun. With that said, David Fincher's Alien 3 is...
a masterpiece. There, I said it. It's a fucking masterpiece. You know it. I know it. Get with the goddamn program.